What's up guys, Shane Vega 3D Printing, and today we're gonna check out some Clear Pet G from 3D Solutech. Welcome back guys, I said here we have some clear or transparent Pet G from 3D Solutech. Uh, I recently reviewed 3D Solutech Silver Metal PLA, which was fantastic. You gotta click up here if you wanna guys view that video. Now, from that last review, there were a lot of comments that came out that 3D Solutech is not actually an American company. They just say they are here in the box, 100% USA made. I didn't do the research into the company because I, I just don't look into the companies that way. I'm not deep diving each company where they actually source their materials from, whether it's from China and they pack it in the US or whether it's all made in the US, they just brand it and ship it out of here. I don't know and personally, I don't care if that's how they wanna market their product. So be it. I am not the marketing police or anything like that. I'm not deep diving into all the different companies that send me these filaments. I really care about how is it print and the print quality versus the cost of the filament. That is what I look in for. If it is a problem, whether this company is or is not a USA company, then please take that into account if you do decide to buy their filament. Just want to put that out there and now we're going to worry about this. So this is the same box that the PLA came in and it tells you all the different features of it. It's smooth, vacuum sealed, high compatibility. Again, that 100% USA they say on there. They've got a bunch of QR codes right here for Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, how you can get a hold of them. And yeah, it's a simple box. Tell you up here that it's natural clear. It's pet G, the lot number, and the Amazon sticker there as this was sent to me through Amazon. Now here we get to the spool. As you see, it is a full sticker on both sides of the spool. Most companies only have just that little bit. Uh, there are no windows or anything to view through. And it is a, looks like to be a normal vacuum sealed bag. There is no zipper on it, like a Ziploc zipper to take it off. So let me get some knife here. I think with them, they put all their stuff here in the middle of the spool. So we'll get a couple things out of here. So here's the Duskin pack. There's just one in there. Okay, they roll away. Then they have a sticker, another sticker, and a little sticker. It says 3D Solutech Pet G Filament, and it, the nozzle temp should be 200 to 220. That is really low for Pet G. Normal, most Pet G that I have printed with has been between 235 and let's say 245 on the normal, but we'll do a temp tower test to see how this actually prints in that range and we'll go all up to like 245 just to make to check it out and see what it is uh, and then they say they want you to tag things with hashtag 3d saw you tech on instagram and they will give away a 16 gig uh, thumb drive so one thing i really like about this company and how they pack their spools is there's a 3d printed filament clip already on the spool it's not wound through these holes here on the side they do that, you actually waste less filament. Now granted, you're only losing a few inches or a foot at most whenever you wind it through the side. But they're more forward thinking because this is actually a great way to hold your filament. I have several like this and a few that actually clip on the side of the spool that I prefer to use rather than weaving them through here because if your filament ends up getting a little bit uh, a little bit of moisture in it or it starts to crack, then you end up losing whatever, and then you end up losing whatever's pushed through there. So this just works out really nice. Again, this is a nice clear. I don't see any color tinge to it. And I will say that some clear filaments, mainly PLAs, will have a certain uh, different color, like a yellowish or greenish tinge to them for some reason. Uh, most PET Gs or PCT Gs that I've had, other variety of that type of plastics, have all been fairly clear. So this should be just as good, I'm hoping. Uh, the spool is clicked together, so there's a little bit of wiggle there, but it shouldn't be anything to worry about. I've never actually had a spool fall apart on me. That was a big thing years ago, where spools were just crappily manufactured and were put together properly. But all of the ones I've had have been fairly good quality and I haven't really had any issues. So again, this is clear. So we're gonna see lots of vases here because vases are really the best thing to print in these. And I'll show you a couple other examples, things that you could print with the clear filament, but that's really the best thing for them. So let's throw this on some printers and see how it turns out. All right, welcome back guys. So here we have some prints with the 3D Solutech PETG. And I used just about half the roll, maybe a little more than that. I actually used a lot of it for testing out like little quadcopter tiny whoop frames that I'm using with my Hubison X4 
drone. So you basically buy the drone, take all the parts off of it, put it on the little frame, and you're off to the races. And it was fairly durable, it, you know, crashed several times because I'm not that good at it yet, I'm learning. And that's kind of why I like being able to 3D print the frames. I'm afraid to actually wreck the frame it came with, but this one allows me to do the camera and stuff like that. So I printed out a bunch of them and it's generally strong for the most part if I landed on like the grass or furniture, like soft furniture or the carpet. But if I drop it from like I have a, sup of a few feet up down onto, I have like a, uh, this floor is like a chip floor. I don't know, it's some kind of concrete type deal. It basically just shatters. Um, the Pet G is not that strong when it comes to that, which I was a little disappointed. I thought it would be a little stronger. I've never used an application before. And I did also print here a little carabiner to try out. Uh, this is actually my second print with this one because the first one literally just snapped once I tried it. So I'm gonna try this one under the uh, close-up camera just so we can see if it actually is going to work or not or if it's just gonna snap like the other one did. I think the previous one snapped because I didn't do enough walls or top and bottom layers. So I greatly increased those. I think I'm doing six top, six bottom, six walls. And then we're gonna see how well this actually can hold up uh, just under some regular testing. Now, real quick about this filament. Um, this print did not come out very good at all. I don't know what happened. This was printed on the CR-10S and there are several lines through it. It's kind of hard to see. My wife actually loves the way this looks. She's like, it looks like frosted glass and she really likes the way this looks. But also this vase was not a good choice to print in vase mode. I, I forget who designed it, uh, but I'll, I'll definitely put links to all these different models down below and you can try it yourself. But just the way that the overhangs are at the top of the diamonds, it just didn't fill that in at all. So there's lots of air pockets, lots of openings there. So this definitely does not hold water. And for some reason, every so many layers at a very inconsistent rate, there is some type of movement or something, but you can see a layer change. Again, we'll look at the close-up camera, but I was super unhappy with this, but it feels really weird. Like, almost like like it's so smooth the way it printed so it feels almost like a like a rubbery plastic instead of like something like more firm which pet g is you know more malleable than pla is you know it's also stronger than pla but it's just i don't know it's just got this weird feeling to it so i've got a couple vases here and this one printed at a much higher layer height so it's nice and shiny compared to the other vase just because I wanted to see if a higher temp, larger layer lines, how clear could I get this to go? Pretty clear is the answer. And then a couple other prints to kind of see how complicated I could do and to see how my settings looked and just how the filament performed. So let's get a closer look at these. All right, so first off, my Maker Coin. And with clear filament, my only pet peeve with clear filament is that it always looks frosted. Unless you print it as one perimeter, it's always gonna have this frosted look to it. No matter what kind of infill you have or perimeters, it, it's going to look frosted no matter what you're going to do with it aside from vase mode. So that's the one thing that kind of makes the clear PETGs boring in my opinion. Uh, they are fairly strong, you know, when it comes to other filaments, but it just is a little boring. I wish more companies would make colored. Aside from that, you can see the infill in there. This is with four bottom, four top, three perimeters, sorry, two perimeters on this one. And everything came out strong. It did fairly well over the supports. Again, it's really hard to see just because it's clear but you can kind of see where it's rough, where it's not. I was actually surprised at how well it did on the overhang around the coin because I can't, you can't see it, but I can run my finger and feel how smooth it is. And it's this, yeah, this one right here is the only one that was a little bit rough and you can kind of see it right here. But other than that, it was a really good print. No stringing, it was good. So then I went ahead and did this 200% Benchy, which came out fairly well also. There, you can see some retraction changes here and there. You kind of see how this almost looks cracked here. Those are retraction changes in there, here along the wall. Overhangs were pretty good. The top of the window here, a little bit of sagging there, and the same thing back here. Uh, and that's inevitable with PETG because you're supposed to use either low fan or no fan. So you're gonna have that happen depending on the type of model you're using. But this is really, really smooth. And you can just see how nice and smooth that is. The bottom layer was great and you have that frosted look to it. Some people really like that, some people don't, but you can see my finger behind there, not really can see it. Uh, the CT 3D XYZ, you can see that on the bottom there. And here on the back, it's the Benji, which is really hard to read actually. 
But either way, this also came out really well. It's nice and strong. You know, no real issues with this model at all. So I wanted to print something a little smaller, a little more complicated, a little more use use case what I would need it for. So this actually fits little practice golf balls and it's supposed to go underneath your 3D printer. Sadly, I printed this out and it doesn't fit underneath the Triangle Labs D-Force Mini Delta printer that I wanted to use these for. So, oh well. Uh, but again, I wanted to see how it felt strength-wise. You know, could I bend it, whatnot? Like, how would it do? Like, it does bend a little bit. Let's see if we can do it this way. I mean, you can see it is flexing there a little bit, but I am using uh, pretty much all my strength here. And it's not breaking, so this would do really well underneath, mount under a 3D printer with a, you know, little practice golf ball in here. This really reduces the vibrations. I think this would work really well with that. You know, it's a strong made, you know, the print is strongly made with the supports in here like that. But yeah, here you can see some of the retraction changes in it. But yeah, again, pretty much flawless print, printed just like this, no support, no stringing anywhere, so it was good. Then I decided to up my game, and here we have this Ventrilla style, or Verona style, I forget what it is, I don't know actually how to pronounce it either way, uh, skull. And you can really see here, well it's really because it's going to focus weird, but you see down in the back there how weird these look, the retractions, how jagged all of these look because of the retractions. And how much, there you go how much the model is going to move because of heat, even though I'm not going that fast, 50 millimeters a second, really not cooking anywhere. But other, I mean, it really did come out pretty well. Um, all This had, did have a bunch of random supports throughout it. There were some in the skull. There's a bunch underneath here. The cheeks had them, the eyes had them, and they just pretty much just pluck right out with a pair of needle nose pliers. But I mean, aside from it having that, the stringness is pretty low. I can say, oh, here's actually, here's two supports. See, those still down in there. You just basically take a pair of needle nose and push those out, and they pop right out. You know, there is some stringing, which is pretty common with PETG, but I think it did a fair job in something this complicated. Like, this is a retraction stress test for any printer and any filament. You really got to have things dialed in to get this to print out perfectly. All right, here's the carabiner we talked about. Again, this is six perimeters, six top, six bottom, and... It works. It's not breaking on me, but there it did. I'm going a little far. I would over exaggerate that a little bit. I'm not quite happy with the structural strength of this because even if I do this here, I can just snap it. And that did not require a lot of strength. And this was rectilinear, rectili, rectil, rectilinear, sorry, infill at 50% with six top, six bottom, six walls. It's really not that strong of stuff. And this was at 245 centigrade. And they recommend, I believe it's 220 to 240 for this. I think that's what it was. I don't have the little note card anymore around. Yeah, it did not, the layers bonded okay, but structurally it's just not a very strong blend of filament in my opinion. It just really isn't. Okay, here's that 0.28 millimeter layer height vase, and you can see it is fairly clear with my finger there. It kind of has some little wobble here, I don't know. You can't really feel that at all, but you can see it. I'm thinking this was a change in temperature in the hot end for some reason. Why, I don't know, but that is going to be my guess. As I was only, I printed this with a 30% fan. I wanted to be sure that it actually came out okay. For bottom layers, yeah, super duper smooth. You know, it came out really well. You kind of hear it cracking a little bit as you move it around, but it's actually not, I mean, it, it does hold water. I can say that, I did test it out. It does hold water very well. And yeah, it looks good, but again, it's clear. Like it's kind of boring. All right, and then a close up of the weird layer change on here. And then you can kind of see in the top of these triangles. So right there, you can kind of see the gap right here. You see the hole right there where the, the diamonds come together. And then this weird layer change that I honestly can't feel. I can't feel from either side. I don't know what that was. Was that some kind of chain? Uh, you know, it's, it's also not, because here it looks to be, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, and there's, oh God, okay, there's a bunch right here. Like it just, I don't know what went on here at all. This is like a 20 some hour print. 
because this was at max size on the CR10S. But it looks cool. And I mean, it's, you know, kind of see-through, kind of glossy, you know, or, or a crystally smoked, whatever you want to call it, frosted. Um, so that's not bad. And it is a little hairy inside as well. Like I can feel, you know, hair inside. I did one more small vase just to see how it would come out. And this came out great. Uh, there was no hairs anywhere inside of it. Four bottom layers, one perimeter vase mode. I didn't have any weird changes in it. I, again, I don't know what the deal was with that other one why I printed that way. Maybe it was a G-code issue or just the printer was struggling with a print that long and tall. But this one came out absolutely perfect. You know, a little bit of see-through, so it is fairly frosted in there. Yeah, so this one came out much, much better. So what I have to say about this filament, it works. It's a little mediocre, in my opinion. Uh, it looks good. I can get the retraction dialed in pretty well. But the structural strength of it is not as good as I thought it should be. Maybe I'm just printing it wrong, so please let me know if you guys have any different opinions or if you've printed with this and it's been really, really strong, but the fact that I can pull apart this carabiner does not mean it's strong because I've seen people print with PETG, hang weights on it in a 3D printed carabiner, this exact model, and it hold like 50, 60 pounds. My hand strength is, what's, what, do you, what do you have in strength in your hands, like five or seven pounds per square inch, roughly, I don't know. I should not be able to break this with my hands. And the fact that I can is a little disconcerting. So I would call this a middle of the road PETG. Your mileage may vary with it. You can dial it in. It does look pretty good if you're going for a frosted or if you're going for a clear look, use a higher temperature with a larger nozzle diameter and or larger, larger layer height, I should say. And you're gonna get fairly clear prints. Like I bet if you put this like a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, printed this at 0.6 millimeter layer height at like 250, man, this would be practically clear, I bet, if you went ahead and did something like that. So it, it can work out well, depending on your application. This is a clear filament. Most clear filaments do not hold a special place in my heart, just because they're boring, they're easy to use, uh, or actually they're kind of hard to use because I'm sitting here thinking, what in the world can I print with clear filament aside from vases to make a video kind of interesting? I tried to do that, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys decide that you want to try this filming out, there'll be an Amazon affiliate link down below. Do your purchasing with that. And that being said, this was sent to me by 3D Solute Tech via Amazon for the purpose of this review. I wasn't paid for my opinion, and I am not accepting anything other than the roll of filament to test out here on the channel. So I thank you guys for watching. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Either way, talk in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys on how I do these film reviews. If you guys wanna know what's going on, make sure you're a subscriber. And if you wanna get an email notification anytime I upload new content, ring that bell icon, and then you'll be in the know, and you'll be one of the first to know. If you guys wanna help me out financially, there's a Patreon link if you help me out monthly. There's a buy me a coffee or a Streamlabs tip if you guys wanna do me a one-time donation. Or if you just do your daily shopping on a lot of the big vendors, eBay, Amazon, AliExpress, I have some affiliate links down below. Update your bookmarks with those. And when you make a purchase using that link, a little slice of what you buy comes back here to help me with the channel. I thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, happy printing.